finishing the space battle game coming up on Machine Learning Basics. Hey everyone, uh, just as we get started, I wanted to say hello world to our latest patron on Patreon. Hello world. Uh, welcome to the crew that helps make this program possible. So. Uh, when we were last together, it had been uh, quite a while ago, and uh, COVID hadn't even hit the U.S., so it's been a very crazy few weeks. Um, I've also started a new position at work where I'm doing a lot more with AR and VR stuff, um, so it's been a very exciting few weeks for me, so I'm sorry I haven't gotten to these videos as much as I would have liked. However, um, we have done some cool things. And I want to show you where we are with our space battle game. Uh, things are looking pretty good. We have ships. They fly around. They shoot each other. The demo scene looks nice. We got some good effects going. Uh, we had that last time. But now the players are playing fairly well. And they're good and challenging without being too crazy hard. Um, and so we're going to go into just kind of some of the code and some of the training process. Um, Right now, uh, for the Space Battle game, we're on an older version of ML Agents, so we still have an Academy in this case. This is version .12. Uh, we will be upgrading. Uh, in the next video, we'll be updating to .15, and we'll talk about why that is uh, that uh, we should upgrade. Um, so you'll see that there is an Academy here, and then there's three main files that we're worried about. Um, there is the bullets that uh, the player shoot. There is the agent that is deciding to turn and uh, fly around space. And then there's also the game environment itself. So we have the academy here. It doesn't actually do much. The code is uh, pretty darn empty. So uh, we're not going to worry about that. Now we're currently in the demo scene. I'm going to go over to my training scene. Uh, it looks far simpler. Uh, and you'll see here in my scene view, Right, we have the two players, which are just spheres that have a little dot out front so that I can tell who is who. Um, and you can also tell with all of these environments turned off that I'm kind of doing a sanity check on the quality of code. Right, when I do training, I activate all of those. Um, and then I may train in parallel or may, may train directly from the editor, uh, but I'll have all of those active. Um, so going through each of these, uh, the first and foremost is the agent itself. Right, this is the player. Um, and basically we need references to the environment, how quickly we're turning, um, some of the rewards. These are the default reward values. You can play around with these. As you play around with different reward values, you will get different behaviors. Um, this is all event hooks, which are used to um, either control the flow of the game or they're also used to add hooks like uh, I have the smoke coming out of the back right in that demo scene. All of that is controlled by these Unity events. Um, the rigid body, that is the uh, kind of the physics subsystem for the ship itself. All right, and then how many current bullets it has out and what's the cooldown on shooting things, um, that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, we do something when you hit the enemy, right? You reward the player, that's good. Um, and then there's a cooldown on the gun, so every time a fixed date update comes around, we increment that so that we know when uh, we've surpassed the threshold and are ready to fire again. Um, we, when it starts, we get a rigid body. So a lot of this is fairly straightforward, standard Unity stuff. Um, right when the user tries to request to shoot a button right when they send the shoot command we just make sure that the number of bullets that are currently on the screen you get three at a time um is you know below the max and that your uh weapon has cooled down enough for you to be able to fire um when a bullet expires um the decrement that and um we also do a sanity check here to make sure that you can't somehow get into negative bullets just in case um so the collecting observations, this is where we start getting into the Unity ML agent stuff again. This is where you're providing all the information to the agent and saying this is what is going on in the world, right? And so this is getting information about the environment. Uh, this is getting information about the current velocity. And in this case, we also are normalizing everything 
because again, these agents tend to do better when all of your values are between either zero and one or negative one and one, uh, because that's just kind of how neural networks are written um, is with this scalar values between negative one and one usually, or zero to one for those cases where that makes more sense. Um, and so this is collecting information, where are the bullets, where are you know, the ships and whatnot. Again, we've tried to do visual observations for these and it is possible to do visual observations and get it, but the truth of the matter is um, in a lot of cases, if you already are in the game engine and you have the information about the environment and can just provide that information, it's going to be, your systems are going to train much more quickly. They're going to be much more reliable than if you are hoping that it's going to infer from screenshots of your game. It is doable, but usually for the people that are doing this, you know, screenshot based, um, you know, visual observations, uh, they have a ton of compute power. And I know my computer is no slouch. Uh, we've gone through builds of it in previous videos, but um, even then it just takes a, an absurdly long amount of time to do visual observation. So I generally don't recommend doing that unless you have to. Um, so this on collision enter, this is basically um, detecting whether or not you are getting blown up. Uh, so in this case, this game object tag of ball, that's really bullet. I just reused a tag that existed in ML agents. Um, and then this heuristic mode, this actually is uh, if you have a player play instead of the agent. Um, and so lastly, here's the agent action. This is the last major segment. Um, the agent action is saying, all right, based on these observations, um, it's going to come back with a bunch of numbers that say take these actions and this is where you interpret the numbers that it provides to you and say all right based on what the output of the neural network is this is how i control the ship using it all right so basically we have three main things right thrust either you're going or you're not right um and so that's a zero to one um and then a uh turn right left right or no turn and then a shoot um, and in our case we're using discrete values as opposed to continuous values um, doo, 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 doo. so yeah you know if the thrust is equal to one then you accelerate and then if turn is a zero then you know don't do anything if it's um, you know one then left and two then right uh, so again this is just interpreting it right and if it gives you a one for shoot, that's when you try to shoot. Um, in many cases, what I've seen is, sorry, um, unless there is a penalty for not hitting the shoot button, I'm sorry, for hitting the shoot button when your ship isn't ready, unless there's a penalty for uh, shooting when you're not ready, generally speaking, it's just gonna constantly press the shoot button all the time, every time, because why not, right? It just wants to get out the maximum amount of bullets because there is some luck involved. So the more bullets you have on the screen, the more likely you're going to hit the opponent. So um, it doesn't tend to conserve its shots, especially without any kind of penalty around uh, firing too soon. Um, you could, you know, introduce a game where you do have like a penalty for shooting um, and that will encourage a system to be more judicious with its bullets but this is you know kind of an actiony uh game where you want people to move around a lot so having a few bolts flying around is actually probably a good thing for the playability um and then this agent reset um again this is uh when the game resets that's what this does so uh i did have another version of this game oh uh, when i was working on this what i found though is it played too slowly. It wasn't that much fun. I wanted to be more dynamic. I wanted the player to have better control. One of the big things that helped with that is when I'm controlling the player now, um, there's a little bit of a different behavior than what happens before, and it comes to when I'm turning. Um, before, I had a lot of turn momentum, which is more realistic when it comes to space. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a lot of fun. The system doesn't feel as responsive. It's not as comfortable or in, or as intuitive as to having something where uh, the player stops turning very, very rapidly. Uh, in this case, I think I just made it instantaneous. You're either turning or you're not. Um, 
And then that just made the controls feel more solid. It made the ship movement uh, easier to anticipate. And so, um, you know, all of the machine learning in the world isn't going to get me away from the problem of, oh, wait, my game isn't that much fun because I'm frustrated with the controls, right? Um, and then the pacing was also, uh, it was a little too slow. I wanted to up the action of it. And so I spent some time actually going back and polishing it. Um, and that was really important uh, to make sure that I went back so that I had a fun game. Now, one of the other things, um, once I got all of that done and out of the way, I came back and wanted to do some training. Now, this is version .12 of the Unity ML Agents. One of the things that they've released in uh, .14, and they're on .15 now, um, is the ability to do uh, self-play. And that isn't something that we've had before. So in this case, we've kind of had a, I put in, you'll see my process here, it kind of ended up being self-play-ish. It's like self-play light. Um, so basically what I did is I took the earlier version of the game where we had the player who just wanted to survive, right? All he was trying to do was avoid bullets and stay alive. And that became my kind of uh, default start um, AI. And then what I would do is I would freeze that one and have it infer that, and that would be one player in the game, and then I would train the system against that player. And so, you know, you'd then end up with a player that was more aggressive, that would get good at shooting, and then I'd freeze the second player, right, and then have a third player come in and try to beat the second player and kind of go back and forth. And that's what a lot of self-play systems are for, and you know they do it as part of the algorithm and it's more integrated and everything i just did it in a number of steps here to get to a point where i had something that was playable and a decent opponent and it actually worked fairly well um so we'll see i have a number of training runs right i'd go six million and that would take me you know an evening right this is the kind of thing i'd kick it off at night i wake up in the morning and it's trained right six million runs um and so i have a few of these right and you get a little bit better and you get a little bit better um, and then this one, I let it run for longer because I said uh, I was looking at this graph. And you know what? I'm going to yeah, make this bigger since this is uh, mostly we're going to be talking about reward. I said, you know, I see this going up, but I don't feel like we topped out. So um, then I moved over to um, the, you know, just a longer run to see how far we'd get. And um, sure enough, uh, more time meant better scores. And so... Uh, the third iteration uh, went really well. Um, and then, well, I kept doing that, right? I said, why not? Let's let's keep going. Um, and so I went longer and got more. And so now we're getting to, uh, you know, a full day. Um, and again, this was back when um, I was still going to the office because uh, we weren't all working from home. Um, and so, you know, I'd kick it off in the morning and then I'd come back and the next morning I'd have a trading agent. No big deal. Um, and let's see, so I kept doing that and doing that, and every now and then um, I would swap things out. I'd also play with weights a little bit just to see what some of the different behaviors I would get were. So in this case, for example, um, I changed it uh, to see if um, the survival step, uh, you know, that staying alive longer wasn't rewarded as much, and so... Um, you know, I was just playing around with that a little bit to see if I would get some different behaviors. And, I, you know, I didn't adjust it much, um, but I did get some different behaviors. This one, you know, the orange one wanted longer games than the gray one. And, um, you know, as you play with your game, you'll find out uh, what works for you. Um, and then the last, one of the later experiments that I did um, was I went over and I did some generative adversarial imitation learning Gale. So what this is, is this is a framework where you take human play, right? And it's going to go and watch a human play and you record you playing the game. And it'll come out with these recording files. And then you train the system. It, it will watch your gameplay, learn from your gameplay, and then try to optimize from there. And so this was really uh, an interesting and different approach. Now, some of the things that I noticed about it is... Um, I didn't do a ton of it, and that is because it was slow. 
uh, Gale was a very, very slow process. But if we look at how quickly it got um, to be pretty darn good, um, you know, it, this was just, you know, in 100,000 steps and then, you know, um, certainly didn't even need to go to half a million, although it was still learning. Uh, but even in just like 100,000 steps or something, uh, it had something that was somewhat playable. Now, um, the downside of this is 100,000 steps in Gale took me two hours, right? As opposed to 100,000 steps when I was doing my normal training took me three minutes, right? So the amount of time taken per step is much, much greater than... Uh, you would normally see. So it's not really an apples to apples comparison when you see that, you know, both of the, you know, one of these lines is super long and the other one is super short. Um, you know, in this case, you can see the orange line here is about a day and then the blue one is 10 hours. Um, so it is, you know, uh, one of those things where you're going to have to play with it and see how um, your system behaves when you do training on your game. But it is an option that ha does have some value. Now, uh, last but not least, I did another big long run. Um, I played with some weights again. And this one really goes much more asymptotic here at the end. It really kind of flattens out, which tells me that to get even better, I'm going to have to do a whole lot more training. Um, and so uh, I was pretty happy with this, and this is actually the player that we have now, I believe, is uh, Space Battle Fun 6. Um, and so that's in there, but we have all of these uh, different neural net files are available um, so that you could, you know, see how they behave, right? There's the Gale one, here's the others, and so you can, you know, go into an environment um, and you can pick a player and you can drag and drop it in there and see how... Uh, those different players behave and what that lets you do is you know as you start thinking about okay if you're putting a game together um, you want different opponents with different personalities and so sometimes weighting things differently is how you're going to get some of those different personalities um, so from here where are my next steps what am I going to be up to um, I want to upgrade uh, this whole project up to uh, dot 15 unless they're already up to dot 16 I'll have to take a look um, and one of the big reasons for that is for the self-play. Um, I do want to see what happens if I just let um, the system automatically do that trade back and forth and get better and better and better um, to see what kind of opponent that provides. Uh, because in some of the games I've seen where that's uh, gone on for a while, uh, you do get some uh, very good players. Now, the problem is what I'm afraid of is that you then get a player that's unbeatable. Um, so I'll say the Space Battle Fun 6 one, um, this is a pretty decent player. It's, it's, you can kill it. Um, you're not automatically doomed as soon as you start the game, but, uh, you know, it's not one of these ones where it's like super trivial to kill it every single time. So, um, you know, it. I do think it is going to be possible with the, the self-play to have an agent that is um, better than people. Uh, I, I think it's uh, quite possible in this game, um, especially considering how fast the ships can go, right? We can get to the point where uh, the machines are going to be able to react faster than the people will. Um, and so, again, on one side, that's kind of a negative. On the other side, maybe it's not, you know, it depends on what you're training. Are you training a wingman? Maybe you want a really powerful wingman for a while. Or again, are you training an opponent? Okay, well, you don't want to train an unbeatable opponent. So think about what your use case is. Think about what you're planning out um, as you do this. And don't be afraid to do some experimentation and, and tweaking of your reward signals to see what kinds of interesting behaviors you get. Um, because you can certainly get different things. As always, if you have questions, comments, thoughts, um, you can reach me in the comments below. You can find me over on Patreon, and um, you can also find all of my source over on GitHub, and I will include links to all of those below. Until then, I hope that everyone out there stays safe, stays healthy, and I wish you happy learning. Take care. Bye-bye.